give me a rough one. Hey everyone, Joe here, and welcome back to another vlog. Um, I kind of put this one off for a bit because it's been reasonably rough, basically in short. So, those who haven't been following, or those who have been following, I guess, uh, will know that I have scans every three months-ish. So my last scan was in November, and we decided that because my cancer had been stable for so long, we were going to wait four months before doing a scan. Now, that happened, what was that, end of March? Or first of April kind of time? And we got the scan results back a couple of weeks ago. The lenvatinib has stopped working. Completely, or a little bit, don't know at this point. But, it shows growth. On my latest scan, there is growth of my largest lung um, met, and it has increased in size from 3.8 millimeters, no, 3.8 centimeters in the largest dimension to 4.5. So that's grown by 7 millimeters. Uh, on top of that, I also have some growth in my thyroid bed of some conspicuous looking soft tissue nodule, which is 7 millimeters across. So, not an ideal state of affairs. Not how I was hoping that 2021 would be heading, that's for sure. So, what happens next? I guess is the important bit. That's, isn't it? Like, it's the important bit. And what happens next is, well, some of it's already happened, because I left it long enough. But on Tuesday, uh, today is the oh, 6th of May, the Thursday. So on Tuesday, I went to the Royal Marsden in London, and I saw Dr. Newbold in... Uh, clinic. Uh, lots of people who have thyroid cancer have been referred to the mast and have seen her and know who she is. Um, she's one of the leading specialists in Europe for thyroid cancer, so being seen by the right person. Uh, basically it's to see if any trials were available, any uh, special treatments that they had that we didn't have access to, um, anything they had that could be tried at the phase one trials unit even. So what's happening is, is my sample that was removed from, from my neck kind of two and a half years ago yeah, two and a half years ago, has uh, once again uh, been pulled out of storage and is being tested for um, mutations based to see if it's going to be applicable to using another type of TKI so that's tyrosine kinase inhibitor which lenvatinib is a broad spectrum of but basically trying to see if there are more targeted treatments available uh, these weren't available a year and a half ago so to give you an idea, medicine does move quite quickly, this is good we want this to be happening. So ideal case scenario is they find something, they match a mutation, they match the drug and I go for it and it works. Now what we're doing at the same time is we're also testing to see whether or not immunotherapy might be an option. Now typically immunotherapy isn't suitable for anaplastic thyroid cancer um, or poorly differentiated thyroid cancer, uh, which I might have rather than anaplastic, which is an interesting one because it's really difficult because of how slow it's grown and how it responded to lenvatinib. It's a difficult thing to look at. Um, plus, we know what was in my neck was anaplastic, but what's in my lungs, we have no clue still. Impossible to tell without doing samples. And do you really want to do samples of someone's lungs? Probably not. Not not great. So, where do we go from here? I say we've been tested for the immunotherapy. Um, ID, ideally, checking to see if we've got the PD1 or PDL1. Um, expression for immunotherapy. If I do, then there might be an immunotherapy option. There might be some things that come up. Um, that would be a special case though, because typically immunotherapy can't be used um, and isn't supported, licensed or funded in the um, in the NHS. So it's National Health Service in the UK. So it would be a special case and it would have to be a, um, a one-off kind of basis to be like, a look, can we try this kind of thing? Um, which, hopefully, we don't get to that Hopefully we find something for the kinase inhibitors, because that's kind of like a known quantity, if that makes sense. I've been on one already, I know what to expect whilst I'm on it. I can handle that. Um, but what happens between now and me getting those those results back is I have another scan, and that gives us an idea of how, how much it will have grown over the space between those two scans. It's kind of about two months-ish between the scans. So we'll be having another scan, we'll be looking to see if it's grown anymore. It doesn't like its runaway growth yet, 
and it is just one met that has grown dimensionally whilst the others have become a little bit more conspicuous which is vague and it's an interesting term uh, what does that mean? Uh, it basically means that it's more noticeable so it means that on the scan there's been an increase in the uptake of the contrast or the edges have become slightly more defined that's not necessarily bad in itself um, but it's a sign of things are changing and typically with cancer change unless it's shrinking is bad so kind of looking at that looking at it that way um but honestly it's shit the whole thing is shit um we're obviously hoping that things have been stable for so long and i started to kind of ramp up in my normal daily activities i was able to go back to the gym i was going to the gym twice a week which is quite nice do some exercise actual kind of a stretch out move around more and it's giving me more energy plus i managed to get a real hand on the side effects of the lymphatic around the digestion and i've been able to eat better keep food in and have more energy overall very very good very positive that's good we want that to happen and because of that i was able to enjoy life a little bit more same time the restrictions within the united kingdom around covid are also relaxing and it's like yeah cool you know we're starting to live a bit of a life now it's gonna happen and then this so it's a real uh, real punch in the dick um of course if the, there aren't any other options around the immunotherapy or tkis then it's chemotherapy and having done that before I really hope there's another option. Like, I'll do it, and I'll handle it, and I'll get through it. But I would really rather not. That's the truth of it. And not scared, not scared of it. It's a predictable thing. You know, you go in, you have infusions, you feel like shite. You feel less like shite, then you have to go back in in three weeks, and you do the same thing all over again. So um, we'll do that, and I'll do it, and I'll get through it and then I'll be prepared for the next thing after. And that's the plan. And that's where things are, and that's what I'll do. Um, people say I have a particularly good attitude about things, and um, I talk about things in a matter-of-fact way, and I won't stop doing that. Either way, I'm going to continue doing vlogs anytime something happens, and if anytime something changes, I will keep everyone updated, because we're at the point now where we've got you know, almost 4,000 people following along, paying attention to what's happening to me. And... I feel like people should know when people should know what's happening and the way things go so yeah quite a somber video today really not what I wanted to record I'd want to record something happy jolly up but life doesn't necessarily always go in that direction which is a shame a real shame so got a couple of weeks to go and then I'll find some more stuff out and we find out what options may be available um, previously, um, before anyone suggested it, I was BRAF negative. That's not being tested for this time because we've done it and that wasn't an option. So they're being tested with three other mutations, it'll be interesting. Um, I do my usual stuff on this one, which is the if you are hearing about this and you think of suggesting cannabis, don't. Or if you want to suggest the Gerson therapy, don't. Or if you want to um, tell me to go to MD Anderson or Sloan Kettering in the US, don't. Because I can't. I can't, it's not an option. Um, I'm seeing what options we have here in the UK, which are basically pretty much the same. The difference is this is free. So we've got some real interesting things ahead. Also, um, I know people always mean it well, and I don't want to sound disrespectful or you know, negative about it, but um, I, I'm not religious and don't suggest that I try and find it. Um, I am an anti-theist, so don't say it, thank you. That's it. Just say that. Keep it to yourself. Um, religion is like a penis. It's great if you've got it, but you shouldn't go pushing it in other people's faces uninvited. There you go. You can take that one. That one's free. So, here we are. Where are we in? Nine minutes and I've babbled. Cool. That's me at the moment, really. Busy mind. Lots of things to think about. Still difficult to come to terms with the idea of me being here at the age of 36 with incurable cancer. I'm a bit like... I have no idea how this happened. No idea. And it doesn't really make sense either, so I'm a bit of a statistical anomaly. Um, I've outdone my expiry date. I have got a cancer that I shouldn't have, really. And no one knows even what causes thyroid cancer at this point. So, hey, good fun. Never smoked, don't drink. Used to be a professional kickboxer. Generally quite a healthy person. 
but that didn't help, did it? No. So, bit of a bit of a, a mess with a mind kind of situation. Now, what I'm going to casually plug is I did a um, took part in a podcast. The link is in the description of the video, um, where I am I was joined by um, two other content creators over on Twitch, and we kind of had a good old chat really. Um, asked me some questions. I shared some experiences I've had. Um, a little really kind of nice little condensed thing for over the last last four years, four and a half years that this has been going on for. Uh, so if you do fancy going and watching it, listening to it even, sorry, then yeah, link is in the description of the video. Also, if you watch this far, you're probably wondering what word to say. Um, mm, what were we to say? What were we say at the end? I'm looking around. Um, last time, didn't we do cat brush? We can't do that again. Um, a wooble. A wooble. Just leave that in the comment section because it's daft. People will be like, why are people saying this? And then they won't have watched the video, but we'll know will know but right I'm going to say thank you once again for watching guys and hanging out and um, being supportive I appreciate it but do make sure that you hit the like button subscribe if you're new and at the same time share it around because there are lots of people going through similar situations that may benefit from hearing another voice that will understand what they are talking about and what they're feeling um, but then again other people feel different things who knows but right once again thank you for watching and I'll see you soon Bye.